I'm not even looking at the camera. <laughs> oh, you're still recording. <laughs> hey, my name is Caitlin, and this week on Picks to Bake, I am making carrot cake. The first step is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and grease and flour your baking pans. For this recipe, you're going to be using either three 8 inch round pans or two 9 inch round pans. Go ahead and set them to the side and move on to the batter. The ingredients you will need for the batter are three cups of grated carrots, which is three to four medium carrots, three and a quarter cup of flour, one and a half cup plus two tablespoons canola oil, one cup of granulated sugar, one cup of brown sugar, six eggs, two teaspoons of baking soda, two teaspoons of salt, one tablespoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a pinch of cloves, and one tablespoon of vanilla. Mix together the oil, granulated sugar, and brown sugar in a mixer. Let Lou just talk. Once that's mixed, you can go ahead and add the six eggs and vanilla. Pro tip for the eggs is to eggs. Eggs. <laughs> Pro tip for the eggs is to crack them into a separate bowl before putting them into the mix just to prevent any shell from getting into it. Once that is mixed, set it aside and whisk together the flour, baking soda, salt, cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves. Once that's all mixed together, go ahead and add it to the mixer. Maybe a little at a time, just so it doesn't go everywhere. Scrape down the sides and then mix for another few seconds. And the last and most important step is to add the grated carrots. It's also at this time that you can add some chopped walnuts or raisins if you like that in your carrot cake. Batter check. Ooh. Nice. Man, that is heavy. Put the batter into the pans, making sure there's an even amount in each. <laughs> Put them in the oven and bake for 25 to 30 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. <laughs> God. Once your cakes are out of the oven, let them cool completely and then put them in the fridge for a few hours or leave them even overnight to cool. Before you start making any icing, make sure to level out your cakes so they stack better. F*** off. I did it. Some of the carrot is green. Well, I'm sure it's fine. Once your cakes are leveled, go ahead and set them aside and start on the icing. For the icing, you will need six cups of powdered sugar, three eight ounce bricks of cream cheese, one cup of butter and one tablespoon of vanilla. Cream together the cream cheese and butter until there are no lumps. For best results, use room temperature cream cheese and butter. Scrape it down and mix for a few more seconds. Come on. Add the vanilla. And lastly, gradually add the powdered sugar. Every time. You breathe it in, it tastes so good. Rude. If the icing is a bit thin, go ahead and add a little bit more powdered sugar until it gets to the consistency that you want. And if it's a bit thick, you can go ahead and add a little bit of water. In my case, I gotta add some more powdered sugar. Do not want. No. I guess I should probably taste this before I put it on, right? Oh, for me, that's delicious. Once that's all mixed up, you can go ahead and start decorating the cake. For this, I'm just gonna use an offset spatula. Being honest, I added a bunch more icing sugar and it's still really thin and it's running down the sides and I don't want it to be overly sweet because then you're not gonna taste the cream cheese. Um, I'm gonna see if I can maybe add some more and by some more, I mean a ton more of icing sugar. If it thickens it up a little bit more then I'm probably gonna add some decorations to the cake that I already have. But I'm gonna put this in the fridge and hope, hope that the icing hardens a little bit so it's easier to decorate because the icing is just like falling down the sides and you can see the cake under the icing. And I'm kind of pissed about it because I'm a perfectionist. But it's cool, I'm calm. I'm not even mad, not even mad. 
bag. If you do plan on making this cake, um, I suggest adding two to three more cups of icing sugar to the icing. Yes, it's gonna be a little bit more sweet and it's gonna take away the flavor of the cream cheese a bit, but for getting it to stick to the cake, it's worth it because you don't wanna go through what I just had to go through. It sucked. I'm still kind of salty about it. But now that it's chilled and out of the fridge, I can decorate it with the rest of the icing that I think enough. I dyed some icing. I got some orange and some green, and I also got a little bit of just the regular. All right, time to fix this cake. Another reason why I was so like pissy about it is not only because I'm a perfectionist, but also because this cake is for my mom's birthday, so I kind of want it to look like really nice. I'm gonna try and write happy birthday on it. Wish me luck. Oh, that. Oh, I'm so glad you came out okay. I feel like that's what I'm gonna say to my child. <laughs> Here is the final product, and I am so glad that it came out okay. Since, like I said, this cake isn't for me, I can't actually cut into it and have a taste of it right now, which kind of saddens me. But I do have the tops that I sliced off of the cake and icing. A little bit of orange in there, a little bit of green. I made a little carrot on top. I love carrot, kids. Cream cheese icing is dope, all right? 